everyone. Welcome back to Alone on Art. Today, I'm going to be discussing how I put together my own custom watercolor palette. When I decided to go about it a year ago, not a lot of people were talking in detail about why or how they chose their colors for their own palettes, so I was pretty lost. And that's why I decided to make this video. Before anything else, I just want to point out that a big chunk of the script and clips I use for this video are a year old. I only got to finally editing everything together recently because I'm not really sure at this point, but I guess it's all for the best because that means I've had the time to really test the palette out. Now that's out of the way, I'll talk about my upgraded palette which was also my first custom assembled one. The last set I had been using started to run out, and instead of buying a whole set with paints from a single manufacturer like I'd always done, I picked out my own selection of tubes and pants from several brands. If you read around watercolor forums and blogs online, you've probably encountered comments on how putting your own palette together is, for the most part, better than buying a set. However, as someone who was newer to watercolor then, I don't think I'd have known enough about the medium to do that. And I guess for those of you who want to get into watercolor or are just really starting out, buying a quality affordable set, in my opinion, is totally fine. Even those with like more than 12 pants in them. Because it'll give you the opportunity to play around and try a lot of different colors to see which ones you end up using the most. Well, at least that's how it worked out for me. So let's move on to the main point of this video which is all about the steps I incidentally went through as I clawed my way through the dark. So a little disclaimer, you know the saying, the more you know, the more you know that you don't actually know anything, or something like that at least. Well that holds true for me for all things in life, especially in art. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that I am not an expert, in any way, at all. However, I did try my best to find a logical process for myself to go about this specific task, which panned out alright I guess, and so I thought I'd share it here and maybe someone else would find it useful. So let's finally start. Several factors went into deciding which colors I ended up going with. First of course is budget. Quality art supplies can get really expensive, as you may probably already know, so I decided to limit myself to around 12 to 14 colors, which in hindsight I feel was probably still too many. For reference, here's my 16 pound Cotman set I used mostly from January to June of 2019. You can easily notice that I used the colors in the top row a lot more than the earlier ones in the bottom. In fact, I'd already replaced one of the blue pants there with tube paint for the new upgraded palette. This brings us to the second factor I considered while putting it together. This might come as common sense and cliche, but it really is important to know yourself. Remember how I told you like two minutes ago that it's fine for beginners to be using large sets with a bajillion colors, most of which you will probably never really use up? Here's my old Sakura Koi set, and you can see that some of the pans are still going strong. I don't regret starting out with it though because now it's made it easier for me to know which specific colors I couldn't live without and which ones I barely touched. So in general, I tend to use a lot of reds and cool blues, so I already knew that most of my palette would comprise of different kinds of those two colors. I also tend to like painting scenes with a lot of trees in them, so I figured yellows would come in handy, and maybe a few greens. So my really basic preliminary reference list kinda went like this. Note that I had already bought two warm blues, indenturing blue and ultramarine a few weeks before upgrading this palette. So in addition to those, I wanted a green leaning blue, a more neutral and temperature blue, a dark red, a warm red, and a pinky red to mix purples with, and then a transparent neutral yellow and a warm yellow. I didn't think of adding a cool yellow then because I hate how lemon shades look on their own. 
but I guess I regret it a little now because it turns out they are useful for mixing oranges. And lastly, I needed some kind of convenience green that would mix well with the yellow choices to make more natural looking foliage. So another sub tip, know which artists you look up to and kinda analyze if they shared some color schemes and if you're feeling a little lazy like I was, you know, just copy them. For me, I really like how the impressionists, post-impressionists, and expressionists use color. Thinking about it now, those three aren't that similar in their use of color, but I guess my favorite artists from each movement have purples and peaches feature prominently in their work. <laughs> my choices have also been heavily inspired by the likes of my watercolor idols, John Singer Sargent, Berth Morisot, and Maurice Prendergast. Sorry if I didn't pronounce their names right. I tried looking up what specific colors they used to make my life easier, but I was only able to find Sargent's watercolor palette. So from those, I tried to pick out the specific colors that fit into my very loosely defined list. After that, I ran over to here, YouTube, specifically Denise Soden's In Liquid Color channel and her incredibly helpful top 5 favorite series where she picked out her top 5 favorite colors from each color family. I've linked to her video of her favorite blues on the top right. She included in each entry of every list the pigment information, brands, and swatches of how each one mixes with other colors in her palette. I just have to say it. Her series almost single-handedly influenced my specific pigment choices for my palette. Especially after I saw how certain colors that I didn't like on their own mix with one another to create totally gorgeous ones. After that, I did two things simultaneously which involved a lot of dizzying, switching around, many many browser tabs. So even before all this started, I had already narrowed the brands I wanted to choose from to these four. Why? Because they're the ones within my target price range of being sold in the art stores near us and I didn't want to bother with shipping costs. Simple as that. I also opened up the amazing Jane Blundell's swatch write-ups for the brands I mentioned I was choosing from, minus Van Gogh. And then I opened the quite indispensable handprint pigment information pages for each color family. This brings us to one of the most important things I considered which was light fastness. That just means how well the pigment holds up under exposure to light. I'm planning to start selling original illustrations and painting so that was quite important especially since most of those interested in buying want stuff to hang on their walls. It's probably the biggest reason that spurred me into upgrading in the first place. So I guess getting quality materials is kinda an investment. I mean quality materials don't necessarily mean quality art, but it does mean having something that won't fade or disintegrate as fast. So anyway, I kept in mind what qualities of each color I liked and based my decisions off those. For example, the cobalt blue from Holbein, Rembrandt, and White Knights all use single pigment PB28. I decided to go with Holbein for that specific color because according to Jane Blundell's write-ups and looking at her swatches, out of the three brands I considered, it was the most transparent, which I needed it to be because I planned on using it for glazing shadows. So after doing all the cross-checking for all the shortlisted colors and brands in my list for pigment properties, I finally arrived at my complete palette. So that's all for now. Click the subscribe button and the notify bell below if you are interested in part 2 where I'll be showing finished paintings I've done with the palette, the light fastness test results, and many more. Also if you can't wait, most of my non-sketchbook work is still done with this palette and you can see them on my Instagram account alonehun linked in the description box below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.